Hey everyone, so as promised, this week we are going over the second part of the subdivision series. Um, it's just the two videos for now. I might go into more detail on some more complicated patterns late, later, but for the time being, I wanted to focus on subdividing in fours and subdividing in triplets, um, in threes rather, you can think of it that way. So I'm gonna go over this in the same format I did last week. And this one will probably be a little bit shorter because there are fewer things that I wanted to show you, at least at the basics level. So as always, we start off with the quarter notes. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just to give you a baseline, this is how the piece is going to play out. That is the pulse. And then what we're going to do, we'll move on. So the subdivision here is in threes. So you notice each beat is broken down and subdivided into three separate beats. So one, two, three, four. I have the accents on the one, two, three, four so that the pulse is clear. So here we go. This is what the triplet sounds like. So first threes and then six. So it doubles in speed. So again, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, same pulse, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So the subdivision works the exact same way that it did with the fours. The difference is now we're going from three to six instead of four to eight. So in each one of these beats, there are six notes and the way it's grouped is, again, evenly spaced. So that's what this is delineating. The idea that in this space, that includes four quarter notes, we can also fit 12 triplets, or not 12 triplets, but the pulse that incorporates this four set of triplets. We can also incorporate double the number by subdividing it further and speeding it up. So that's useful in the same way that it was with subdividing in fours. And I will go on to some exercises, but before I do that, there's something different slightly that we're doing with this exercise, because what you can do is what's called a quarter note triplet as well. So these are eighth note triplets. They're breaking through and subdividing evenly, and there's a pulse on every beat. Notice the way that this is written. We didn't go over rests before, but this is what a rest looks like. There are both quarter note, well, not just quarter note, but for the meantime, you're probably only gonna see quarter note and eighth note rests. And a rest just means you're not playing anything on that beat. So here we go. I'll show you what this sounds like. One, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You hear it? So we're subdividing the bar into six beats. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So as opposed to 12, we're now having the amount of time and adding six. So once more, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So here on this last bar, I have the bass drum playing the chord note. Now the quarter note triplet is a pretty common, uh, pretty common notation. The thing is, it's a little bit more complicated. I wanted to show you that it exists and show you how it works and how it's written. So notice it still is grouped like triplets. One, two, three. One, two, three, but middle one's missing. One, two, three, but the, the uh, uh, first and third are missing. And that is, notice that there's even spacing in between each beat. That is one beat, missing beat. 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 So as opposed to what we have with the triplets, where it's just playing straight. Instead, we go on. And we have three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three. 
So opposed to 12, we now have six. And then the last bar, keeping pulse on the quarter note as we were before. So one, two, three, four. But we're also keeping the six overhead. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. I'm not going to go over this now, but I will go over it in a later lesson. But this is your first introduction to what's called a polyrhythm. And the reason it's called a polyrhythm is because the bar is being subdivided in two different ways at the same time. So I'm subdividing it in six. One, two, three, four, five, six. At the same time that I'm subdividing it in four. One, two, three, four. And the result is... The result is that beat. It's one of the most common polyrhythms. I use it all the time. It helps you subdivide. And in pieces where you're working in, say, 6-8, so that's 6 eighth notes, that will show up something like this, where you're keeping the quarter note pulse. Because 6-8 is still technically in 4-4, four, four. the reason we call it in 6-8 is... You see this? This is what I'm talking about with the eighth note pulse. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six, eight is just those six notes. Same thing. All right, so now I'm going to move on to exercises. All right, so now we're moving on to groove practice. And as before, I'm starting you out with just quarter notes to get the pulse going. So one, let's just start here. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And note that it's on the ride this time. Crash, ride, ride, ride. So that is the pulse. And then we move on to triplets. And this whole, I'm gonna break these down so you'll understand what this is going over. All of these are just different ideas of grooves that you can play with just triplets. I'm not even going into the 16th note triplets, which are one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Instead, we're just doing one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, that's faster than this pulse, but that's the main idea. So here is the first groove. So we're doing triplets on the ride, accenting the first quarter note with just a crash, so just crash. And we're playing the bell to accent the other four, or the other three rather. So here, this is what this sounds like. So in this groove, you're just playing straight triplets with your right hand. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So to get comfortable with this, one thing I might recommend is just straight up practicing playing triplets to a metronome. So keep that pulse. One, two, three, four. Right hand, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Left hand, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Just like that. Just give yourself that time to build the muscle memory to play that and then move it up to the ride symbol. One triplet, two triplet, one, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Doesn't need to stay on the ride symbol, but that's the way this groove is written. After that, we're moving into a standard swing pattern. So you're gonna hear this a lot if you hear a shuffle beat or just a straight up um, swing chart. So I'll play it just to give you a, a chance to hear what it sounds like. Oops, sorry, wrong bit. So you might've heard that groove before and sometimes it'll be played on the ride. So it's a shuffle pattern always keeps that. So instead of playing straight triplets, what we do is dun, skip one, skip one, dun, dun, skip one, dun, dun, skip one, dun, dun. So you hear, dun, 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 dun. It gives this kind of gallop feel. 
which is the driving factor in swing charts, is that pulse of... So one more time, and we're just playing quarter notes up on the right. One, two, three, four, and letting the snare fill in. Very standard. It will be a little bit hard at first, but it is worth learning. And then what we're going to do is move it so it's the same pattern but the whole idea behind all of these exercises here is we're playing a lot of the same patterns. We're just moving around the beat. So instead of playing the ch -ch -ch on the snare, moves it to the bass drum. So same thing. You want to work on limb independence? This is a great way to do it because it's going to give you the opportunity to just move around the same grooves and play it all over the place. These are all grooves that I regularly play. So it's not just practice for the sake of practice. These are things you'll be able to use. So after that, we're moving the shuffle to the ride. So listen to how this sounds. Same rhythm. First it's snare then bass, and then ride. And it's just one individual limb doing it at each point in time. So that's all you have to focus on is moving it around. So that's this grouping here, these three. And then we're gonna go back into not skipping a beat, playing full triplets. So what we get to here is the snare just playing, filling in the triplet. So listen, so we still have the pulse on the quarter note. More frequently, this is a fill, but the idea here is right, left, left, right, right, left, left, ah, tongue twister. You get the idea though. Right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left. I'm surprised I got through that. On the quarter note pulse, one, two, three, four, and it's still triplets. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. But now we're putting it on the snare drum. And then after that, we're going to move it to the bass drum. This is a really great beat. Comes up a lot. It's great for fills as well and for build sections. So open hi-hat, just... This will also give you the opportunity to build your limb independence for your foot and the strength to play those doubles. After that, we move into this one. So this is that polyrhythm I was showing you earlier. One, two, three, four, five, six, over one, two, three, four. This is how it sounds in a groove. And notice again, the idea is that we are only having one limb subdividing. So, probably heard that groove before. It's a pretty fun one and it's a pretty common one. And now you'll learn how to play it in a few different ways. So first, same concept, have it on the snare. Next, we're gonna move it to the bass drum. So just give yourself the opportunity to play through these. And remind, remind yourself once more, these repeats are here to give you the idea that you should be playing this multiple times. I just did one just for the sake of having something in there to show you, but really you should be going through these and playing them to the point that you're not getting them wrong. Because at that point, you'll be able to incorporate them as grooves. Also, don't feel limited to what's here in the chart. The idea here is that we're moving the rhythm from one limb to the other. So if you have an idea about how you wanna do that, that's not here, that doesn't mean it's wrong. Give it a shot. And then finally, after the bass drum, we're gonna move it to the ride, or the hi-hat, rather. So we're still keeping the quarter note pulse, this time with both the snare and the bass drum. 
and we're subdividing with a hi hat. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're closing it out with the good old chord note. So once again, all of these groups, this whole practice chart is going to be up on my Patreon. It is free. You can follow me. You don't have to subscribe at this point in time. I would appreciate it. It helps me support myself and keep this going week to week. But I want to be helpful at this point in time. And I understand that not everybody has the resources to spend on some random person who's just doing free lessons. So the charts are still going to be up there. This explainer video helps you understand how this all works. Once again, I'm going to put a wave file up there that has this whole chart played through so that you can hear what it sounds like again independently, maybe even play along to it. I'm going to have both that initial chart I was showing you that just broke down the rhythms, as well as this one that breaks down different grooves using the rhythms. So once again, those are going to be on my Patreon. They will be free. Link will be in the description on YouTube. Just click on that. Go check them out. Thank you for taking a listen. If you felt like you were helped in any small way by this, let me know. I really appreciate that feedback. It's what keeps me going at this point, just knowing that I help even one person. So thank you for tuning in. Good luck with these, and I will see you next time.